Today is the Feast of the Holy Innocents, December 28th, 2023. The epistle for this Mass is from the book of the Apocalypse. In those days, I saw upon Mount Sion a lamb standing, and with him a hundred forty-four thousand, having his name in the name of his Father written on their foreheads. And I heard a noise from heaven, as the noise of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And the voice which I heard was as the voice of harpers harping on their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new canticle before the throne and before the four living creatures and the ancients. And no man could say the canticle, but those hundred forty-four thousand who were purchased from the earth. These are they who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were purchased from among men, the first fruits to God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth there was found no lie, for they are without a spot before the throne of God. The Holy Gospel, taken from St. Matthew, chapter 2. At that time the angel of the Lord appeared to sl in sleep to Joseph, saying, Arise and take the child and his mother, and fly into Egypt, and be there until I tell thee. For it will come to pass that Herod will seek the child to destroy him, who arose and took the child and his mother by night and retired into Egypt. And he was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which the Lord spoke by the prophets, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, perceiving that he was deluded by the wise men, was exceedingly angry, and sending killed all the men children that were in Bethlehem, and in all the borders thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, A voice in Ramah was heard, lamentation and great mourning, Rachel bewailing her children, and would not be comforted, because they are not. Thus are the words of the Holy Gospel. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. In the pre-55 sacred liturgy for centuries and centuries, on this day the Church, during the octave of Christmas, dons the vestments of mourning. It's, it's a purple vestment, there's no Gloria in this Mass, there's no Alleluia. And it's, it's for the holy innocents expressing their mourning, the, the, the wailing and weeping of Rachel, all the mothers of Bethlehem and the surrounding areas that lost their children. And then on the octave of the holy innocents, eight days after, the Mass is in red to honor the joy of their martyrdom and a storming heaven when our Lord will open it. Here is the hymn from Matins, which says this, With terror doth the tyrant hear, the King of kings has come to dwell, where David's court shall widely rear a sceptered reign o'er Israel. Then cries out, raging at the word, he comes to stand where we have stood. Hence, soldier, and with ruthless sword, deluge the cradles deep with blood. What profiteth the crime so dread? What hope shall Herod's bosom sway, alone amidst the thronging dead? The Christ is safely borne away. All honor, laud, laud, and glory be, O, o Jesu, virgin born to thee, all glory as is ever meet to Father and to Paraclete. Amen. So this weeping and wailing foretold by Jeremiah, who lived about six, 600 years before Christ, <clears throat> foretold this 
event. They have poured out the blood of the saints as water round about Jerusalem, and there was none to bury them. They have given the dead bodies of thy servants to be meat for the fowls of the air, the flesh of thy saints for the beasts of the earth. These are the saints who suffered for thy sake, O Lord, avenge them, for they cry unto thee day by day, Avenge, O Lord, the blood of thy saints which is shed. <clears throat> so Herod unleashed this massacre of the innocents, which we honor today. And today we have our own Herods. Most of the presidents of the United States since 1973 have all been Herods. And sad to say that includes Trump, who makes an exception for abortion, for incest, and rape. But there's no, no exception to murder a child. There's no exception. And in the mother's womb or outside of the mother's womb, it doesn't make a difference. It's murder. So all this blood, over 50 million every year, cry out to heaven for vengeance. Let's consider some points of the slaughter of the innocents. Firstly, when was the slaughter? Some think it was quickly, shortly after the Magi visited the stable of Bethlehem and the three kings were reminded in a dream, go back another way because Herod is wicked. Some think it was many years later, two years later. That seems to be the, the favoring opinion. Uh, however, St. Anthony says it was one year and four days. Blessed Mary of Agreda says it was four months after the birth of Christ. After the departure of the Magi, Christ was presented in the temple in Jerusalem on the 40th day after his birth, the 2nd of February, when the church celebrates this mystery of the Feast of the Purification. After that, our Lord returned to Galilee and dwelt in Nazareth, and from that place fled into Egypt, as is clear from St. Luke chapter 2, verse 22. And all this would require many weeks, or rather months. So it was somewhere probably within a, a few months after our Lord's death, I mean our Lord's uh, flight into Egypt. Here's from some of the fathers of the church, brought up by Father Cornelius Alapide. Herod delayed the massacre in order to find out a sure way of killing all the infants, that not one might be hidden by his mother and so escape. Hence, Avalensis thinks that Herod in the first place ordered the little boys to be enrolled with the name and age of each, then summoned them individually according to the role when he had summoned them all and gathered them together, he slew them all. Yet he gathered them not in one place, but in the various villages or districts, to each of which he sent executioners to seek out, gather together, and slay the infants, as St. Matthew teaches here. Such a thing might be easily done amongst the Jews, because they kept very exact records of their genealogies that it might be known that the Messiah was born of the tribe of Judah, according to Jacob's prophecy in Genesis chapter 48. Hence, when any child was circumcised, his name, date of birth, and his parents were set down in these books, just as parish priests today register the children who are baptized. According to the Abyssinians, who have in their canon of the Mass, of their liturgy, that the number of infants killed by Herod was 14,000, is most likely. This, this is the opinion shared by the Jesuit Father Salmeron, Franz Lucas, and Genebrard. Genebrard adds that the Greeks have the same number in their calendar, 14,000 innocents slaughtered, boys slaughtered, around Bethlehem. Some other considerations. 
Note the wonderful providence of God, whereby first he punished the Bethlehemites by the slaughter of their children, because they themselves would not receive the Blessed Virgin Mary and her son and St. Joseph with hospitality, but compelled them to go into a stable and there give birth. Secondly, because by means of this massacre, he, our Lord, God, decorated the boys themselves who were slain with the laurel of martyrdom. Thirdly, because God brought about that Christ should escape by flight into Egypt and should through this slaughter become better known to the world. By this it was prophetically declared that the Church of God would increase by the cruel fury of her persecutors, since by the punishments and deaths of the blessed martyrs, while Christians were supposed to be diminished in numbers, they were augmented by the example of the martyrs, says St. Leo the Great. And Tertullian, in his famous apology, and the blood of the martyrs is the seed of Christians. So the cruelty of Herod unleashing this bloodshed. And we know that St. John the Baptist, by a divine inspiration, St. Elizabeth took St. John the Baptist out of sight to the, to the banks of the Jordan River and hid him in a cave. So St. John the Baptist was also spared. So Herod, he was a, quite a cruel king. St. Augustine says, I would rather be Herod's pig than one of his sons. And here's why he killed. He has a whole list of murders um, under him. Herod, because he was a foreigner in Indo an Indomean, had cunningly usurped the throne of Judea. Then in order to keep it, he killed the legitimate heirs of the kingdom, one and all, some deceitfully, others in a show of force. Therefore he raged against everyone who seemed to place an obstacle to the security of his rule. First he killed Hyrcanus, the legitimate heir to the throne and high priest. And then soon afterwards he killed Aristobulus, the nephew of Hyrcanus, and also a high priest. Third he killed Mariamne, the daughter of Hyrcanus, and his own wife. Fourth he killed Alexandra, Miriam's mother. Fifth, he killed Alexander and Aristobulus, his sons, by Mariamne. So he killed his own boys. Sixth, he killed Antipater, his own son, by another wife. And this for fear of losing the scepter, which beset Herod until his death. And so he led a most cruel and miserable life in constant fear and suspicion. This, then, was the reason why he would kill so many innocent children, 14,000, to be sure of killing with them Christ, the newborn king of Judea, so that he would not take away his throne. And how did he know? Because the Magi explained to him, we, are, we followed his star, this is the king of of the Jews. We come to adore him, <clears throat> as was prophesied since the book of Genesis. So God's vengeance, as he has had vengeance on many of these abortionists, some of these politicians have died quite miserable deaths. One news reporter was a woman, and she boasted about having abortions, and she died in a car crash while she was alive with the pieces of metal of the car cut right into her, and that's how she died. That's how she treated the babies in the mother's wombs, her own womb, uh, ripping them up. So she was also cut up and died that way in her car. <coughs> Another politician in Minnesota, um, no, in Ohio rather, he died in a plane crash near um, a playground of children. So here's God's vengeance upon Herod. Here's a few points for his murder of the infants. And as far as in him lay, he, could have, he would have killed Christ himself. So five days after the massacre of the innocents, 
Herod himself breathed out his cruel soul, being smitten with a fever, a cough, dysentery, dropsy, gout, lice infestation in his hair and beard, putrefaction, venereal disease, asthma, and such an intolerable stench that he tried to kill himself. His sons were not allowed to reign as kings, but were only tetrarchs, and perished also miserably. Also his entire posterity, most numerous as it was, became, with few exceptions, entirely extinct within a few within a hundred years, as the historian Josephus relates, Book 17, Chapter 8. And he adds that all men were of the opinion that it was the effect of divine vengeance and retribution. The infants slain by Herod at the Passover time, as it were, Paschal lambs, were a type of Christ who 32 years later would be mocked by the, the next Herod, a descendant of this Herod, the infanticide, who would crucify him with Pilate at the season of the Passover, and who offered himself to God, our Lord, offered himself to God the Father, as it were, a lamb and a paschal victim for the salvation of the world. So what about these children? Did they have, how can they die martyrs if they don't have the use of reason? Because to win that crown, you have to at least know you're dying for Christ. And here's, here's some of the fathers on this. Firstly, Blessed Mary of Agreda, divinely inspired and her body is incorrupt, she says that the children had the use of reason before they died. They understood they were being killed for our Lord Jesus Christ. These same infants prefigured and set an example for all the martyrs of whatsoever century who generously witnessed to Christ unto death. Hence, St. Leo the Great says, In the stars of splendor were prefig prefigured the grace of God, and in the three wise men the calling of the Gentiles, and in the impious king, the cruelty of the pagans, and in the slaughter of the in infants, the witness of all the martyrs. For if tender infants suffer death by the sword for Christ, should not strong adult believers suffer the same for him? Some think that the use of reason was granted prematurely to the infants so that they might elicit an act of faith. And thus, by believing in Christ and accepting death for him, be martyrs. St. John Chrysostom holds this opinion, saying, Meanwhile, the boys became eloquent without a schoolmaster. They became learned without a doctor. They became expert without instruction. They acknowledged Christ and preached him. They, they were not taught by human arguments, but in their innocence, they were divinely inspired, says St. John Chrysostom. And in the chant of laws, the church sings today, <clears throat> All hail, ye infants, infant martyr flowers, cut off in life's first dawning hours as rosebuds snapped in tempest strife when Herod sought your Savior's life. St. Augustine says these words, How happily born were they whom eternal life came to meet on the threshold of birth. And he says also in his third sermon on the innocents, Rightly are these innocents called the flowers of the martyrs whom in the midwinter of unbelief a hoarfrost, as it were, of persecution caused to bloom like the primal buds of the church. So they were hardly little buds, and uh, the frost killed them, Herod's persecution. St. John Chrysostom also adds, Infancy, knowing nothing of suffering, bore away the palms and crowns of martyrdom. True martyrs of grace, they confess without voice, Unaware, they fight. Unwittingly, they conquer. Unconscious, they die. 
Unthinking, they bear away the palms. They seize the crowns without knowing it. Therefore God made these little ones first to triumph, then to live. He adorns them with crowns before he bestows upon them perfect members. By this infanticide, God would teach us, as though on a stage, that the whole of a Christian's life from childhood unto death is perpetual persecution, the cross, and death. And isn't this the history of, of the Catholic Church? Constant persecution, constant battling against heresies, errors, inside and out. And also that the fortitude and courage of a Christian consists more in enduring hardness and difficulties than in doing hard things. That his life is a constant patience than in fighting. For it is more difficult to suffer than to act and fight. To act bravely, an ancient once said, to act bravely is the part of a Roman, but to suffer bravely is the part of a Christian. So that pretty much explains the traditional Catholic movement since the Second Vatican Council, doesn't it? To endure patiently the hardships, the persecution, the being marginalized, driven out from our churches and have been over taken by the new mass in all the bizarre liturgies that have overwhelmed our church and the infiltration from within. And now a, a man in the throne of Peter uh, uh, following basically all his predecessors since Vatican II, smashing tradition, smashing the traditional altars, the communion rails, the Tridentine mass, changing the sacraments so that now they're not even, they're, they're doubtfully valid changing the holy oils, as is permitted by the new Code of Canon Law. And uh, traditional Catholics, faithful to tradition, bishops like Archbishop Lefebvre suffered persecution, so, illegal suspension, null and void excommunication, being called schismatic, renegade, disobedient, when he was most obedient. And Archbishop Lefebvre said Satan's masterstroke was to sow disobedience to, to all of tradition through obedience. So how many priests went along with the revolution and the new mass because of false obedience? And that goes with also compromise groups. They go along out of false obedience with compromise with Vatican II and the new mass. And they end up growing silent and going along with the revolution. We support the revolution by our silence, as well as saying the new mass and supporting Vatican II. The silence is just as guilty. So let's pray to these holy innocents, these beautiful souls who flooded limbo on this day. All these 14,000 boys descended into limbo <laughs> and <coughs> all the millions of souls in limbo saw these babies killed for what? For the sake of the infant. And Jeremiah, who was in limbo, would have, re would have re recalled his prophecy. And everyone would remember. So here, let's close with the collect of the Mass. O God, whose, whose praise the, the martyred innocents confessed this day, not in speech, but by their death, destroy in us the evil of all vice, that our lives may show forth in our deeds that faith in thee which, which our lips express. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee, in the unity of the Father and the Holy Ghost, forever and ever. Amen. Holy innocents, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.